Hey guys, I'm Deborah and I welcome you all to the Melancholic Believer, where we talk all things melancholy from a Christian perspective. In the last video series, which include Fruits of the Holy Spirit for the Melancholic, the Concertius Melancholic, the Holy Spirit was discussed briefly, but not in full details. But in this video, I will be talking about the Holy Spirit. Stay tuned. The on the bed. The Holy Spirit is basically God's Spirit, that is the Spirit of God. The same Spirit that walks through Jesus and the one Jesus promised us in John chapter 14 verse 26. But the Counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, He will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit is our Counselor. The Holy Spirit is our Teacher. It says He will teach us all things and bring to our remembrance all He has said to us. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Truth. The Holy Spirit is our Comforter. The Holy Spirit is our helper. Yes, the Holy Spirit is our helper because I've seen this effect in my life. The Holy Spirit helps me in various ways. I can wake up without a lanam for my early morning prayer. That is the work of the Holy Spirit. He quickens our spirit to be able to do the things of God. Due to the nature of Christianity in some churches in my country, Nigeria, and my early church background. I've always taught it as physical manifest to the mercy. And Lord, if it blows our little minds, let them be blown. <laughs> Father, we want all of what you have, all of what you have. We thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Physical manifestations, but by God's grace, I discovered it isn't, but a spirit. Yes, I've always thought the Holy Spirit was just physical manifestations, probably rolling, crying, shouting, wailing, and all of that, and also probably just praying in tongues. But as I continued to grow as a Christian, I discovered there was more to the Holy Spirit and I started learn more about Him and I discovered the Holy Spirit is there to help us. The Holy Spirit is there to comfort, to comfort us. The Holy Spirit has a major role to play in our life because it's the Spirit of God. It guides us into the things of God. Not all physical manifestations are in true or real, but the Holy Spirit is beyond that. Let's check Prophet Elijah's experience in 1 Kings chapter 19 verses 11 to 12. And it said, Go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind rent the mountains and broke in pieces the rocks before the Lord but the Lord was not in the wind and after the wind an earthquake but the Lord was not in the earthquake and after the earthquake a fire but the Lord was not in the fire and after the fire a still small voice wow this is incredible the Holy Spirit was not in the strong wind neither in the earthquake nor in the fire but in a still small voice Yes, this is true of the Holy Spirit, as it comes in several forms, like a gentle voice, rather than just mind-blowing physical manifestations only. You see, the Holy Spirit is one of the most argued subjects of the Christian faith. Do you know why? It's because the devil doesn't want every Christian to get the full grasp of the use of the Holy Spirit. He either makes them 
not receive the Holy Spirit in full or even if they receive it that they don't use it you and I don't have to do that let us make full use of the Holy Spirit it is like a money being paid into our account that we are to use and we can decide to use the money or not use the money as a Christian there's a deposit of the Holy Spirit in us we just have to use it to grow it more John chapter 14 15 and 16 talks about the Holy Spirit more in full details I would recommend you to check it out it's really help you John chapter 14 talks about where Jesus promised the Holy Spirit the Spirit of the truth that he wouldn't leave them comfortless that he will send the Holy Spirit unto them John chapter 15 talks about the vine and the branches Jesus being the true vine and we the branches his father the husband man it says that without Jesus we can do nothing and this is very true and chapter 16 of John also talks about the works of the Holy Spirit what the Holy Spirit is to do in the earth the Holy Spirit will remove the word of sin and of righteousness and of judgment the works of the Holy Spirit are inevitable in our times now I'll explain on the Holy Spirit using some frequently asked questions. Firstly, what's the Holy Spirit? I guess I've explained that already as God's Spirit is present in one's life. You see, the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit guides us into all truths. But if you have any question on that, Feel free to leave it in the comment section and I'll be glad to answer it. Secondly, how can I receive the Holy Spirit? Firstly, be born again, Romans 10, 9. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. That is simple. Have faith in Jesus. The moment we are born again, God seals us with his Holy Spirit. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 22. He has put his seal upon us and given us his spirit in our hearts as guarantees. Then also keep praying for it. There are some services called impartation services or moments called impartation. When someone filled with the Holy Spirit prays with all for you. For the Holy Spirit to come into you through the laying of hands. And this is according to the scriptures. As seen in Moses to Joshua and in the apostles when they prayed for people. Thirdly, what does the Holy Spirit do? Okay. Basically, it's oops. It's not an it's. So, let's say is. Okay. Just wanted to clarify his functions are listed in John chapter 14 verse 26 but the counselor the Holy Spirit whom the father will send in my name he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you John chapter 14 verse 26 and in this modern world that's least expanding to hearing from God Ability to assess and understand spiritual gifts like dreams, tongues, the summits. The Holy Spirit can do more in our life, and if we only allow Him to, to, to have free hand in our life. Fourthly, how can I sustain the Holy Spirit? First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 19. Do not quench the spirit. Do not quench implies that it can be quenched like a flame, meaning it is like a fire burning. And for a new believer, I can describe the fire as a small candle flame, which is still fire, and as for the futures of fire like it, 
light, which is the same as that of a gas cooker or even a forest wild fire. We can sustain the fire by giving it what to burn on, like paper, wood, etc. And this is the same as the Holy Spirit, as we sustain him by the word of God. The word of God, listening to helpful messages, serves as wood, which will help the Holy Spirit in our life to expand. Because God wants us to move from a small candle fire to burn for him like a forest fire. Let's check out Romans chapter 10 verse 17. So faith comes from what is heard, and what is heard comes by the preaching of Christ. Read it in the Bible yourself is very important, as everyone should have his or her own stand in God, not relying on anyone else but on the source which is God and his word. We should endeavor to make sure that every day we read the Bible. The, in the book of Psalms, it says that he meditates during day and night. We should meditate in the word of God day and night. Lastly, how can someone lose the Holy Spirit? Yeah, sure, one can. I mentioned in the last point that it can be quenched. And let's check out the scriptures to see an example. First Samuel chapter 16, verse 14. Now the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord tormented him. Yes. From that example, we can see that one can lose the Holy Spirit as King Saul lost him. Sin will quench the Holy Spirit in the life of a believer. Romans 6 verse 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer daring? The word and a sinful life will surely quench the Holy Spirit and things like pornography and suggestive materials, crimes, idolatry, lust, and other appearances of the flesh will surely quench the Holy Spirit in, a, in the life of a believer. Feel free to drop your questions in the comments section and it will be answered adequately. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe. And if you subscribe, turn on the notification button so you could get more useful content from this channel. And until next time on the Melancholic Believer, bye.